Hello and welcome to another one of my overclocking guides. Uh, today uh, we'll be doing GTX 970 and this will be a more advanced overclock because I will be talking about using, uh, about tweaking core voltage as well to get a little bit uh, more performance and stable overclock. So I'll start by I'll start by uh, telling you what model of GTX 970 I'll be using today for a demonstration of this overclock. It is Eno 3D iChill Airbus model. Uh, it's an Ultra, so bear in mind that this uh, graphics card was overclocked out of the box. It has overclocked memory and overclocked on the core as well uh, from the manufacturer. And uh, this is actually quite cool because uh, it has a nice uh, cooling solution, uh, quite special as well. Because as you can see here, uh, they have uh, they have a heat dissipator that goes towards the top to cool the memory, and a separate one, the big one, the usual one for the GPU itself. And this is the fan that chill, uh, cools it. So yeah, let's have a look at what we can do. Like, I mean, I'm, first I'm going to show you what I was able to achieve, but your results may vary because every piece of silicon in those chips is different. So here we go. This is my stable overclock. Uh, I will tell you all about how I achieved it in just a moment. I just want to, I just want to show show you in this. Take uh, GPU Z for those of you who know what they're doing. First, uh, this what this is what I was able to achieve. Uh, boost clock says 1488, but I actually uh, was coasting in between 1500 and 1550, uh, and it peaked at 1576 for a few moments there. So there we go, and um, uh, all the software that I will be using to overclock is available for free so I will leave the links to the downloads in the description of this video so you can download this afterburner program and Unigine Heaven benchmark these are the two that we will be using today so first of all uh, if you want you can uh, benchmark your card at stock out of the box setting uh, before and just write down the note about what kind of performance you were getting just to, to make it more interesting for yourself because once you finish overclock you will actually be able to see uh, what you achieved so let's start with the MSI afterburner it's good for any card any overclocks and uh, I'll start from like very beginning uh, setting it up the way I set it up is uh, going to settings monitoring and I choose these four things to be at the top core clock memory clock GPU temperature and power uh, put ticks next to them if you need to drag them up from the uh, from the list below do that as well once it's all set up click OK and they appear over here and the way I arrange my workspace is I put MSI afterburner in this corner here and using the heaven benchmark is um, untick full screen so it, it runs in windowed mode set it up to extreme high and run it in windowed mode with alt tab choose MSI after burner and you will see in a minute why I do this uh, like that because you can see all the readings right here monitor and you can tweak as you go so I leave fan speed on auto because cooling is pretty awesome on this card but uh, you may use the fan fan control that's an auto right now so uh, okay let's get into it uh, the power limit uh, only increases to 106 so I decided to go and increase it to maximum straight away because anyway, uh, even with this stock overclock, uh, it was coasting around 100. So 
you know right away that you need more power if you're going to do overclock so the things that you have to monitor is uh, obviously your uh, gpu temperature is the most important one if it goes too high then you know just stop what you're doing close the benchmark and uh, press the reset button um, what do i consider very high 90 degrees is uh, very unreasonable very unreasonable for this kind of gpu with amd it's uh, okay but with nvidia's new maxwell uh, and and good cooling it is not okay to have that uh, that high temperature so let's start first thing i was doing was finding the absolute maximum memory clock that i could get i was increasing it in increments of 30 just to be safe but if i knew how high it could go then i would probably increase it all the way to about 300 or 400 at least because it went up all the way to 575 so basically what i was doing there i was increasing it in increments of 30 hit apply and then observe the picture here for any signs of unstable overclocking which would uh, result in uh, uh, any distortions uh, with the image any colors distorted uh, textures disappearing and um, any sorts of black spots ripples and grains unusual any unusual activity really from from the picture and so I was doing it step by step increasing it in increments of 30 hit and apply observe again for 30 I mean 10 to 20 seconds and I was I managed to get it all the way up to 575 but um, overclocking is not an exact science so you kind of have to feel it um, go with your gut feeling so once I got to that stage right there I actually thought that I would better decrease it to 500 hit apply and start overclocking the core clock I was doing it in increments of 10 to avoid any uh, like major crashes and system freezes uh, when you do it slowly the worst it can get in most cases is your driver will crash but uh, in a few seconds it will restore itself uh, so you won't have to do hard reset or anything like that so that's why I like doing it in small increments but if you're impatient you can do it in larger increments of 15 or 20 but as I said you can get it can get pretty ugly if you do that I prefer it in increments of 10 so I started doing it in increments of 10 once again hit apply and then observe for about 10 20 seconds maybe 30 seconds uh, if anything unstable happens and as I was increasing it step by step I ran into instability problems at around uh, 50 plus and when it becomes unstable uh, you can either just roll it back to whatever the stable overclock was but I wasn't happy with this kind of result so this is why we do core voltage tweaking basically it is used to um, try and make that overclock stable again so what I've done is once I've found that plus 50 is unstable I've added 5 millivolts just a little tiny bit I don't like doing it in huge chunks um, hit apply and run the benchmark again so if it crashed before close it increase the voltage apply and then just hit apply yeah uh, uh, hit, hit apply and then run it again if it's unstable again then you can increase by another five or maybe even ten but as I said increase it in small increments so when I increased it uh, another five it worked and uh, the driver didn't crash so I could overclock even further so I increased it by another ten hit apply it was okay then another turn hit apply and instability again so once again once you run into in any instabilities you go and increase your core voltage hit apply 
and try to run it again. If it crashes, then increase your voltage a little bit more and try again. And like that, I was able to achieve these settings. At the time, uh, it looked like that. So it looked like this, 500 and 45. And this one was 160, but uh, when I when I tested it again, it turned out that was, this wasn't very stable, so uh, you can tweak it even further. I found that 159 made perfect sense, I don't know why. And then once I found that 159 works well, I decreased voltage one by one before I got to the perfect one which is 43 and then I tried to increase the memory and see if I can get it a little bit further but it's not really necessary but you never know because I was only able to increase it by 11 and it, if I was increasing it to about 16 or 20 it was becoming unstable so I left it at plus 511 but it's worth doing because in your case, it could be that you can do plus 600. So you never know. It's worth doing the tweaking, but it takes up extra time. So once you found that sweet spot in the benchmarks, then you quit your benchmark because it's only a synthetic benchmark. And uh, sometimes even though uh, your overclock was stable in the benchmark, it can still be unstable in real games. So then you go and uh, test it in a real game for a few hours if you have that kind of um, uh, time, but you definitely have to make sure that your overclock is stable. Uh, so basically you start any game, any game you want. Uh, I suggest you do testing in a graphically intense game such as Battlefield 4 or Shadow of Mordor or Tomb Raider or whatever. Whatever game you have. And just look out for the same kind of artifacts and sign of, signs of instability. If it crashes, then... Or any kinds of things happen uh, with the textures. Then you will actually have to go back to the process itself, but not, f not in the benchmark. You will have to use the game to stabilize your overclock. So that's when you have to start um, either tweaking your core voltage, uh, bringing it up and trying again in the game, or you can increase any of the clock's core or memory. Uh, I suggest to fine tune it, do it one by one. So do them separately. Just for example, if it's unstable like that, I suggest you go maybe 10 back on the core clock, hit apply, try it again. If it doesn't work, uh, do a rollback on the memory, apply, try it again. If it's still unstable, try the core, core voltage, try it again. If it's stable, then you can start fine tuning these two. So that's basically it for this overclock and uh, just to, like last thing to say here is uh, I assume that you are aware of the potential risks of overclocking. If you're not then Google them and if you know someone who might benefit from this guide then make sure to share it with uh, that person because it helps me out a lot if you like this kind of content make sure to hit that like button and um, yeah so I'll see you next time uh, next thing I will be doing is overclocking uh, Vapor X R9 to 90 from AMD so stay tuned for that and um, have a good day